how to build your first website um, from scratch. So without using any website builders like Weebly, Wix, um, Squarespace, um, anything along the like, um, and you'll be writing code. Um, so without further ado, we can get started. Um, so here's the first part, it's HTML. Um, and so basically right now, what we'll be covering is what is a website, what's HTML, um, what's the basic structure of our web page, and what our project's gonna be. So to start off, um, before we go into what's a website, it makes sense to say, what is the web? And so all the web is, is the web is just anything your browser can find. So it's really in the name. A web browser can find anything on the web. Um, that's really the simplest way I can explain it. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. So now what's a website? So a website is just a collection of web pages and resources um, and where a resource is just anything that is um, retrievable on the web. So it can be anything you've ever seen in the browser. It can be a downloadable file, it can be a video, an image, um, anything that you've seen through Safari, Chrome, Firefox, or your favorite web browser. And so a web page specifically is one of those resources, but it's formatted as a specific type of text document, um, most commonly HTML document. And we'll get into what that is in a few minutes. Um, and what web page does, what that document does, is that it tells the browser exactly what information to display and a little bit of information about how to display it. But how does that work? Um, some of you might be wondering. And essentially, um, there's three parties in all this. So when you, the visitor, want to visit example.com, say you type that into your um, browser and say your browser is Chrome. What you're doing is you're, is you're telling Chrome, give me example.com. So what Chrome does um, without you knowing is that Chrome goes to example.com and says, hey, is there an HTML document that you can provide me with that I can use um, to show my visitor what the content of your website is? And so what example.com does is that it says, sure, here's a document. It's called index.html. Um, it can also go into any other name.html and sometimes not even .html. Um, but the most common example in the example that we'll be using today is index.html. And after that, your browser downloads that file from the website and it reads that document and it says, oh, I noticed that this document is mentioning other resources. It's mentioning images that I need to display to my user. But the browser only got that text file, that web document. Now what it needs to do is that it needs to go back to the website and needs to request an image. And so what it does is that it goes back to example.com and it says, hey, example.com, can you give me you know, A image and B image, alpha.png and beta.jpg? And so what it does with that is the website then, or the, excuse me, the browser then downloads those two images from the website. And now that the browser has those resources, it has an idea. It can take the, all that information, parse it, make sense of it, and now it knows what to show the visitor. And then that's when, once you visit example.com, that's what you see on your screen. And so all that happens behind the scenes every time you click and visit a new website, and sometimes even when you don't visit a new website. Now, I mentioned HTML, um, so you might be wondering what that is. A lot of you might have heard of that. And um, some of you above a certain age might even remember MySpace um, letting you edit HTML on your own page. So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Um, that's a lot of jargon that might not be very essential to you at the moment, but in essence, it's a special way to tell a browser what information to display and how to display it. And like the very last letter, um, it's a language. So we have to formulate what, what we are communicating to the browser in a special way that it can understand. And um, it's just a way to format um, our text document. And um, again, um, whether you've seen it or not, um, you see HTML pages all the time. Again, anytime you're on the web, anytime you visit a website, you're seeing an HTML page. Um, for example, when you go to google.com, you're seeing a web page, you're seeing an HTML file. Um, now you can either go to google.com right now, or you can go to google.com slash say index.html and you'll most likely see the exact same page. 
That's because by default, Google is showing you index.html. But what's the structure of an HTML file? What's the structure of, say, the pages that we see every day? So we follow the structure of um, a couple steps. So typically when you're writing an HTML file, what you want to do is you want to tell the browser what kind of document it's about to read. Um, so you're specifying the type of document so the browser knows how to handle all the information that follows. Then you define a document. Um, sounds kind of weird at the moment, but we'll see. And then you give the document a head and a body. This is where we define um, both the information, the actual data in our website, and the information about that information um, called metadata about that website. And then we add content. Um, so then after that, in the body, we put whatever we want the user to actually see. So the first step is to tell the browser what kind of document we're about to read. And in HTML, um, this is what it looks like. So you see this less than sign, um, an exclamation point, which in a lot of programming languages is called a bang. So you have a less than sign, a bang, and in all caps you have doc type, um, followed by HTML and then a greater than sign. And so if you take a step back, I know this looks very weird, but essentially what you're doing here is that you're telling the browser that, hey, you're about to read an HTML file. You're about to read a basic web page. So the next step is to define a document. Um, we do this by having tags um, that say HTML in them. And so basically in the language, um, in the HTML language, what we have, the way we communicate with the browser is essentially through a bunch of tags. Um, and so tags can be nested inside of each other. And so say if I have an HTML page, I can nest more information about that HTML page inside of it. And now in the broad file, the HTML file, we have to define the HTML itself. And so we do that by having our outermost tags being HTML and HTML. Now we can define an opening tag with this first tag um, that says less than sign HTML followed by a greater than sign. And then between the two tags, we can add any content. But once we open a tag, we have to close it. And so to close a tag, we do a less than sign again, we do followed by a forward slash, and then an HTML again, and then a greater than sign, as you can see. And the whole nesting concept, putting tags within tags will come about just a few slides. So next we have to do is give the document a head and a body. So um, as we can see, we, have, we now have tags inside of more tags. So we have HTML, the original um, tags that we had just a few slides ago. And now we also have head and body tags. And now you can see the head and the body tags both open and close immediately. Um, and so this is how we define our metadata and our actual data, what's going to be seen to the user or going to be shown to the user and information about what's being shown to the user. And so the next step is to just add content. And this is where we say, we can describe anything that's gonna be showing on the page to our visitor. Um, but that's next. Um, first, we're gonna establish our project. And I did a Twitter poll, um, and what people wanted to see most is public Twitter bookmarks. Um, so essentially what that is, is that we're gonna make a website that can collect all our favorite tweets and put them on public display um, for anybody to see to visit the website and see our favorite tweets. Um, and so, to make things a bit easier, um, we'll actually create and host the website on a platform called Repl.it. Um, you can visit the platform at repl.it in your browser by creating an account. It's really simple, and it's free, and um, we'll create a new Repl. And so we'll get into that right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to repl.it and I'm going to log in. Now, if you don't have an account, you can create an account here, um, but I already have an account, so I'm just gonna log in. My password manager knows all my credentials, so here we are. And I have really bad luck with captures for some reason. Um, I always fail them, so hopefully I can pass it this time. Okay, so this is what REPL looks like. Um, it'll greet you, um, and you have like, 
a sidebar where you have different places to navigate within the platform. But we're, what we're going to do to create a new REPL is we're going to go to the top right corner and we're going to create, we're going to click this new REPL button. Now it's going to ask us what language um, we want this REPL to be. And I'm going to scroll down until I can find HTML. So it says HTML, CSS, and JS. Um, and that's HTML, um, a la another language called Cascading Style Sheets, and a third language called JavaScript. Um, we're going to click this, but we're going to ignore that. CSS and JS for now. We'll get to that in um, a later time in the series. And so I'm going to name this Twitter bookmarks. And I'm going to keep this public. And what I'm going to do here is select create rebel. So now it's generating um, our files. So now we have an entire workspace where we can, we have a website. Um, and we can edit this website. So to the left here, um, we see that we have a script.js file and a styles.css file. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna select these three buttons to the right of the file names, and I'm actually gonna delete them because we don't need them at the moment. And then we're left with our index.html file. Um, and then, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna delete all of this. Okay, um, now I'm going to close the files. So now I only have index.html open. And to the right, what I have is another pane where the actual website is showing. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to copy this. Um, I, I'm on Mac, so I hit Command C, um, but you can also right click and select copy. What I'm gonna do is go to another tab and I'm going to paste that in this tab. I'm going to visit that link and at the moment it might not show anything um, but we'll ignore that for now. Now going back to what we discussed earlier um, something that we can do is we can first tell the browser what our file type is going to be what type of document it's about to read and if you remember what we do is we start with a less than, a bang, in all caps, we're gonna say doc type. And then we're gonna say space, HTML, and then a greater than sign. Now, what this just did is this just created, this just told the browser that we are making an HTML page, something that it can use um, so that it can display information to the visitor. Cool. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're actually going to hit enter, visit a new line. Um, and if you can't see this, please let me know. Um, it shows well for me, but I'm not sure if it shows well in your device. Um, so please feel free to message me. Um, so what we're gonna do next is that we're gonna define our HTML page. So if you remember, we're gonna start with our HTML tags. Now, tags get kind of confusing at first, but what we're going to do essentially is we are going to say less than HTML greater than. And now we open this HTML tag and now we're going to close it again. So I'm going to say less than. And remember to close it, we do a forward slash. I'm going to say HTML again. And we're going to do a greater than sign. And so now I'm going to move my cursor back in between. Um, the two tags. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit enter and create a new line between them. Now next what we do is we define a head in the body. And we do that by saying less than again, head, greater than, less than, forward slash, head. And now we got to define the body. So same thing, body. Cool. Um, so now that we have our head and our body, now it's time to add content. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm actually going to check on the web page um, that we should have generated for us. Um, I'm actually going to say hello world. What I'm going to do is that, as you can see, the file is already saving um, automatically. So I'm going to let that save, save excuse me. And I'm going to hit this green play button. 
And this, what this should do is that this should reload the web page so that we can see the updates. I'm gonna hit that. That was really quick. I'm gonna visit this. And there we see, hello world. Um, so, um, as you can see, our HTML page is showing on our website. So, um, we're gonna go through a couple tags today. So, um, I'm gonna actually gonna remove the body remove this hello world now that we know that it works and I'm going to start off with the head and here again here we can describe data about our HTML page about the content um, describe our metadata now a really interesting thing about um, this head is that we have a tag called title and so what we're going to do is we're actually going to say title so less than title greater than now we open the title tag and we're going to say less than forward slash title greater than I'm going to create a new line between them and now I'm going to define the title of the page um, and you'll see exactly what the title of the page is in a quick sec and so what the title of the page is actually um, we're going to say public Twitter bookmarks actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my public Twitter bookmarks um, Cool. So now it's saving. I'm gonna hit the play button so that it'll load to our website. And now what this does is that this actually tells the browser how to show the title of the page on the tab. So as you can see in this tab I'm in for Replit, um, you see it says Replit um, space dash Twitter bookmarks. And so that's the page's title. Now if I go to the page that we were creating and I refresh, I should see that the title now is my public Twitter bookmarks and that is on the tab the label so that's what the title tag does and that goes inside the HTML or excuse me goes inside the head tags because this data describes the page it describes our content is data about our data or metadata um, so I'm actually gonna go to our body tags and hmm, so at this point um, I know that Twitter actually lets us um, visit a tweet and it, get, it automatically generates HTML code that we can embed in our website. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to visit Twitter. Um, I should already be signed in and I'm just going to pick a random tweet on my timeline. And it's actually a mess right now, so please excuse me if something is not safe for work. Okay. So here's the first tweet on my timeline. Um, if I hit this down arrow, I see a selection for embed tweets. I'm going to hit that, and it brings me to a web page, and it says that I can copy code so that I can embed this code in my web page. I click the copy code, and now it's, it's telling me that it's been copied. So I'm going to exit out of that. I'm going to go back to Replit so that I can um, embed this tweet into my web page. And I'm actually going to paste it there. And this looks like a lot of code. And we'll actually ignore it for now. But what I want to do is that I'm going to hit the play button so that we can see it on our web page. And I'm going to observe whether this change, whether the tweet shows on our web page. And it does. So if I zoom out, I see that this tweet shows. We've embedded it onto our web page. And that's perfect so now what we can do is that we can sort of organize them by category since I know that's a feature that Twitter doesn't already have by default and so how we're going to do that is essentially we are going to say we're going to give each list of tweets a header and so to define the header To define the header um, or a header um, in an HTML page is what we do is take an H type of tag. And the reason why I say an H type of tag and not an H tag specifically is because there are several levels of this um, header tag and each one um, is assigned different sizing and different levels of importance um, by the browser. So for example, if I say um, create an H1 tag, 
this is the first level tag. This is top level. This is the most important header that we can have. Um, and with this, I'm going to say um, at Onyx bookmarks. And I'm going to close that. And now I'm going to hit the play button and I'm going to observe that. And if I refresh, now we see that we have this header above the tweet that says at Onyx bookmarks. Now this is a top level header. And now, now, now that we have the title of the page that the user is going to be able to see in their browser without having to pay attention to the tab label, um, we're going to create more headers. Um, and they're going to be they're going to be less important than this original header because this original header describes the rest of them. Um, all these on the page are my bookmarks. And so now we want sort of lesser important headers um, that describe the different categories of bookmarks. So what I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to go and say I want to make an H2 tag or a second level header tag. So I'm going to say H2. And I wonder what the first category should be. Um, I guess I can make it tech related. So I don't know. Um, tech, literally. So now we have a H2 tag, um, and we call it tech. So now this should be um, a little bit smaller than the H1 tag um, on the page, but um, it should still describe and it still, should still show um, with a lot of importance. So it should be emboldened and it should be relatively large. So I'm gonna hit the play button uh, so we can see changes and I'm going to fresh so that it shows in the browser. And there we see um, at Honest Bookmarks is still there, our main header um, or our visual title of the page and our H2 tags, or our first H2 tag um, says tech. And so if we zoom out a bit more, um, we see we have a title of the page and we have um, our category. And if you start to see a pattern, now we have the title, we have a category, and then we have our list of tweets. Um, possibly. Um, so I'm actually going to go back to Twitter and I'm going to, I don't know, um, select the next tweet. I'm going to embed that, copy this code, and I'm going to bring it to the web page. I'm actually going to put it under the original tweet. I'm going to make some space between them so it's easier to edit. And I'm going to paste that. Um, and so this tweet isn't necessarily a tech tweet, um, so I'm actually going to make another second level header to describe this next list of tweets. Um, so Devin actually mentioned PV, um, that is Prairie View a and University, um, a lovely HBCU. So we're going to say H2 and we're going to say HBCUs. Close that H2 tag. I'm gonna reload the page, and we should see HBCUs. Um, so now you should see the pattern a little bit better. Um, so now we have our again, we have our main title, we have a title of our categories, um, and yeah. So essentially, what we can do here is that we can continue adding tweets. Um, so Jade just mentioned Res Life. Um, speaking of residence life at Howard University, which has not been performing the best that they can um, lately. Um, so I'm going to paste that under Devin's tweet um, mentioning PV in the HBCU category. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reload it again, visit the bookmarks, refresh, and now we have another tweet. Um, so now we have, we're generating a list of tweets. Um, that's all I have for today. Um, if you have any questions, actually, oh, let me not forget. We can also describe our, our um, categories. So we can add little descriptions under, under these titles here, under these category titles. So um, little descriptions are typically about a paragraph. And thankfully, HTML provides us with a specific tag um, meant for paragraphs of information. 
and that tag is just p. Um, so we can say less than sign p greater than. Um, this is a description about the tech category. I'm going to close that p tag. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to refresh. Um, and as we can see, we have our description. Um, so essentially, what we've learned today so far is when we're creating an HTML page, um, or when we're making a website, um, we have our collection of resources. They can be any kind of file um, or any kind of data. Um, this could be an image file, a text file, um, a downloadable file, executable, a game, anything you can think of. Um, and we have special files um, called documents. And the most common of these document type files is an HTML document. And what HTML documents do is like many other documents is it describes how the browser or what and how the browser should display information to the user, to the visitor of our website. Um, and so to create an HTML file, what we do is that again, we describe the type of document by saying less than sign, bang, in all caps, doc type, space, lowercase, HTML, greater than sign. And so what that does is that it tells the browser, you're about to read an HTML file. And this file will essentially describe what information to show the user and how to display it. Following that, um, we have our HTML, um, our HTML tags. So it starts with um, open and close HTML. And again, to open a tag, we have our, our less than, our HTML, like the name of the tag, and then a greater than sign. Um, and then to close, we have, again, a less than, but this time a forward slash, followed by the name of the tag, in this case, HTML, and a greater than sign. And inside these tags, we have information that describes the tag. Because these are HTML tags, the information inside of, this, of these two tags will describe the HTML page. So when we look inside, um, we see a head and a body. So the body describes the actual content, the actual information, the actual data that's gonna be showing to the user. Um, and yeah, this could be really anything you're showing on your website. Um, on google.com, it's simply the greeting, the Google logo um, or the doodle of the day, followed by the search bar. And do you wanna search or are you feeling lucky? Um, in addition to other information that most people don't pay much attention to, um, frankly. Um, but yeah, um, that's the body. Any kind of content you want on your web page, um, and then the head is typically for data that describes the rest of the file, um, that describes the information on the page. Again, this is often called metadata um, in various um, areas of technology. Um, and this, essentially, in here, this is where again you describe what's going describe the actual content of the page um, without actually showing the content. Um, so in the, an example of like this metadata is um, the title of the page. Um, in this case, it was my public Twitter bookmarks. And if we visit our webpage, this again shows um, on the label of the tab. Um, and this should happen on in every browser, on your mobile phone, on your old computer that doesn't work anymore, or on um, the browser on your current device. Um, and then in our body, we have a lot of content here. Um, so first we have the visual title of the page, so what the user can see. And we showed this by having a top level header, essentially being a first level header um, defined by this H1 tag. Um, and yeah, this I call this our visual title because it's, it's the title of the page that the user is going to see the first. It's the largest text, it's the boldest text, and it's at the top. It's the first thing that the user reads, the visitor, excuse me, reads. Um, and then we have a second level header tag, an H2 tag. Um, and in our example here, we used it as 
um, to describe the titles of each category um, of tweets that we have. Um, and yeah, so keep in mind that these header tags are very close, closely related. Um, semantically, or their meaning is that an H1 tag, the lower the number, the more important on the page this information is, um, and thus the more the larger text and the more emboldened um, it's going to be on the page. So that's that. Um, following this H2 tag, we have our P tags, and that P stands for paragraph. Um, and again, we can fit just lots of information in here. If I just type more information, it'll all show up as a paragraph, a single paragraph. Um, and this this will wrap all the way to the end of the page and then wrap back around. It'll show up um, just as one consistent paragraph. Now, following that, um, we have the actual tweets that we got from Twitter. Um, I'm not going to mention these right now. Um, I will provide resources on helping you understand these tags and their significance, but um, that's the details about them might be beyond the scope um, and beyond the complexity of what we're learning today. Um, so if I skip this tweet, i um, going to go back to H2 tag, which is, again, another category title. Um, this is for HBCUs. Um, and then we have our another tweet and another tweet again and we can see this on the page um, by these two tweets right here that follow the HBCU title uh, excuse me HBCU category and again um, yeah we have a closed body tag because all this information is the body of the HTML page this is the actual information that's being shown to the user as you can see um, and yeah, um, that's pretty much it um, for now. Um, hmm. What else is there to cover that I can do right now? Um, oh, keep in mind that as you can see, when I open when I created this title tag, um, I did not keep it such that there's no spaces or white spaces between the content of the tag of the tags and the actual tags themselves. What I did is that I actually created space via a new line. And the interesting thing about HTML is that it's very lenient to the amount of white space that's, that surrounds our content. So if I really want to, I can have a million uh, new lines and, and spaces and stuff. And if I refresh the page, it's still going to show up as my public Twitter bookmarks with no change. HTML is very lenient in the amount of white space that's showing on our page. And so we can space things as much as we want. Typically, when you're reading and writing HTML pages and sharing this code with other people, you want to make sure that this code is as legible as possible. So it makes it easier for other pe for yourself and other people to read the code. Now, one way that I'm going to actually format um, the content is I'm actually going to format all of it very similarly to how I formatted this title tag. So on this H1 tags, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to put the content on a new line and I'm going to have these, these small indentations here so that you can distinguish the content from the actual tags themselves. Um, it doesn't sound like much right now, but I can assure you that when you're just reading and writing thousands of lines of HTML, um, it, it'll really come in handy. Um, just really simple visual representations of how the, the information and the content um, relate to each other. The same for the p tags, and again, I'm gonna leave alone the the um, the tweets for now. But all the content that we hand wrote, definitely gonna format these. And I'm not sure how it shows on your device, but I'm gonna zoom out. And as you can see, we made our first website. Um, now, if you're using Repl, Replit. Um, your link to your website will be to the right of the code that you were writing. Um, and you can actually view it here to the right. You don't have to make a new tab for it if you don't want to. But I prefer using a new tab and visiting it in my own browser uh, for demonstration. Um, but again, you don't have to do that yourself um, if it's much easier for you to just stay within this one tab. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I have. Um, I'm actually going to check Periscope right now.
see if any of you have any questions or anything. Cool, cool. But yeah, um, that's everything. Um, so in the next presentation, we are going to cover CSS um, or the cascading style sheets that I mentioned earlier. And the way that CSS relates to HTML and making your web pages is that CSS help helps you style your web page or make it pretty or um, helps you more accurately describe how you want your website to be visually represented to the visitors. Um, if you've ever seen pretty web pages or pages that are, um, I guess, uh, aesthetically pleasing, <laughs> I guess is a way to put it, um, then they most likely um, had it look like that because of um, CSS. Uh, for example, in our website, um, we have this basic font. We have random bold things we, that we didn't describe to be boldened. Um, and our tweets are big. And there's not a lot of visual cohesion that we described ourselves. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to show you Twitter. Um, so if you're not on Twitter, um, as you can see, um, certain things are in certain places on your screen. And the Twitter engineers who make the website, um, I'm actually going to show like as if this were iPhone X. As you can see, the things moved around. Um, the Twitter engineers use a lot of CSS to describe, to tell your browser how and where to show these icons as text and how it should respond on different screen sizes and dimensions. And I know it sounds like a lot right now, but um, this is actually... This goes hand in hand with HTML and it'll be really cool to learn. Uh, so we're going to learn that next time. Um, if you have any questions, I'm going to stay on the stream for a little bit. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, this is everything. And again, actually, um, if you want to, if you don't want to write this from scratch, um, I'll actually post um, all this code, the link to this code, onto Twitter. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at A-U-N-Y-K-S, um, Onyx. And I will definitely be posting updates there on, like, new streams and stuff like that. And you can, I believe you can even turn on notifications for when I do start a new stream. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, feel free to do that. Um, so, yeah, I'll post this link, and I'll also post the slides um, for this. Um, that I had earlier so that you can, you know, um, follow along later on in case you're watching the replay. Um, but yeah.